happy Friday, Jai. How are you? I'm doing well. How are you? I'm great. I'm so happy that we got this on the books. I have been so busy and I'm like, you know what? I need to get back to my roots of interviewing people from Nick and Disney and Young Hollywood. So I'm like, oh yes, my, it's been so long. So this is very nostalgic for me, even though the movie just came out. That makes sense. So very exciting. Everything good with you? Yes. Thank you so much for having me on. Of course. I'm excited to dive in. Um, I loved Monster High. I watched it on Paramount, of course. Uh, are you still loving all the, um, you know, people coming up to you, people DMing you? Or are you still like taking it all in? Yeah. I mean, it's overwhelming in the best way possible just because I, I think I, it's hard to conceptualize how truly far reaching this fandom is because like you said, it just came out, but it's nostalgic because it has been around for a really long time since like 2008 or 2010, I think. So there are a lot of built in fans and I'm really loving how much people are enjoying the movie. Yes, and I mean this in the nicest way possible. I hated your character and then <laughs> liked your character, but I'm saying I hated it to actually compliment you and what a good job you did playing her. I love that. <laughs> she was um not very nice, and then she came around, which I really enjoyed seeing. Yes, a little redemption arc there. Yes, and I know you've talked about this in previous interviews, just about getting into that space and it seems like this is kind of a theme for you. You tend to be playing the bratty characters. I don't know what it is. You know, I, I promise I'm like a nice person. I try to be, you know, but I guess I just have it in me. Don't okay. push me. <laughs> oh, okay. okay. I won't ask you anything um, like weird in this interview then. Not that I was going to anyway. <laughs> No, never, never, never. Um, and I know that uh, the director had shared pictures of the original doll, the original makeup look. Were there anything, was there any look or concept that didn't make it into the film that you were like, oh, Ooh. That Ooh. that's a great question. I have not been asked that yet. Um, well, during the, the boot camp, period, which was a, about two weeks before we actually started shooting. That's when we learned all the dances and tried on all the clothes and figured out, okay, what outfit on which day. And there were so many outfits that I tried on that didn't make it into the final cut. But there's this one that stands out. It was this, this very sort of scholarly type blouse with these poofy green sleeves. It was I guess it was kind of like an, a dark emerald green. And then I wore this, this shiny gold skirt with it. It was very mummy schoolgirl, but I think the reason they decided against it was because I wasn't really wearing any of that green in any of the other outfits. So mm -hmm. it was just too much to introduce another color, but I really love Cleo's whole color palette spectrum and I think that the the wardrobe department did an, an amazing job sourcing those colors and all the different outfits that we see in the film. Yes, and I think what's so awesome about Monster High particularly is, um, and the movie and the making of it, is there was so much coverage specifically on everyone involved, like at VidCon, meeting yes. the designers, all that, and unless I've just missed it at every VidCon, most shows don't have that type of level of behind the scenes Mm. Fan. So is that something also important for you to document? Yeah, absolutely. I think that engaging with the fans, especially for a project like this, is so important because it's really about equalizing the playing field and saying, you know, look, we all have vulnerabilities. We all have insecurities. We all have things that we don't love about ourselves. But together, we can support each other and bring out those qualities and feel more confident and accept ourselves. So I think that engaging with fans and doing all that BTS stuff is so exciting because it gives people an opportunity to see, okay, who, who are the actual people behind these characters? Yes, yes. And I think that's something that, you know, the dolls themselves, because the dolls have journals and they have their little bios on, yes. the, on the back. It's just, it's something about Monster High in particularly, at least for me, you can really feel like connected to them. So then when they're like made into like a live action, it's like even more connected. I don't know. I'm yeah. really out loud right now. <laughs> no, totally. I completely agree because those journals sort of give you a little glimpse into 
what are you not seeing on like the front of the package, you know? So, and I, I really think that makes it a more intimate experience for yeah. the consumer. It does for sure, for sure. Um, and you mentioned you learned a ton of dances, obviously, you know, yes. things that are tested out. Any dance particular conversation that was cut that you were like, no. Well, I hate to say it, but Cleo's intro into Monster High was originally a little bit longer. Um, I think they had to cut it down for time because the movie had to be a very specific length in order to accommodate for the ads and stuff. Um, and when you're watching the film, you really can't tell unless you do in advance. Yeah. yeah. Um, but yeah, there was that moment. Honestly, though, I think they did a really amazing job of featuring every character, which is difficult to do when you have an ensemble cast mm -hmm. as large with so many beloved characters. But I think they did a pretty good job of of giving everyone their little moment during the dances because everyone worked so hard and not all of us had dance experience. So again, some of them. Them. I mean, yeah. I know the dances have been like blowing up on TikTok and there's like so many. Oh my gosh, that's <laughs> awesome. Uh, if I ever try one, it will definitely not be <laughs> day of light the light oh of no don't Maybe. say that I believe in you okay I'll DM it to only you you just can't share it anywhere <laughs> okay all right it'll be between us yes that's <laughs> perfect that's perfect um and I have to ask do you hope Cleo and Deuce get back together oh uh, my goodness all right here's the thing I love Deuce and I love Case he's like a little brother to me that's the actor who plays uh, dues. Fun fact, he and I actually grew up only 40 minutes away from each other. And like the same, we're both from New Mexico. We talked about it all the time on set, our favorite restaurants, our favorite places, pretty, pretty wild. Um, do I hope they get back together? It's difficult for me to answer. And I, I'm, I totally stand them. I'm a diehard Cleo Du stan in the original series and the original characters. But whether we like it or not, this is a reboot. And yeah. so because of that, the characters are slightly different. The relationships are a little bit different. So the only reason that I'm, I can't say yes or no either way is because I want to be open-minded to whatever sort of opportunities are available now in this reimagining where they're not together you know what else can happen like maybe they can have a deeper relationship if it's not connected with romance or maybe they need time apart to come into themselves and then come back together and be even stronger so I don't know but no matter what happens I love Cleo and Deuce I do. Stan. yes and big fan. was it hard then to get into those scenes and kind of realize in your mind like okay we're now broken up how do I act accordingly how do I show jealousy yes that was definitely on the forefront of my mind anytime I shared the screen with Case or anytime Cleo and Deuce were in the same um proximity of each other because you know just like anyone when a relationship has ended and I think it's pretty obvious that Cleo wasn't ready for it to end and you know Deuce was that one who ended it um, I don't think I've mentioned this before, but uh, before we started shooting, Todd, who's our amazing director, um, he had Case and I do this spontaneous improvisation, and I didn't know what was going on. He, he took us each aside and gave us separate instructions, and then we sort of improvised in character, and it was Deuce breaking up with Cleo. And afterwards, Case and I actually felt it we were like why am I so upset right now we were just acting but no like that hurt um so wait now I forget your original question oh yeah did I think about it yes of course because when you you know when a relationship ends and you know you weren't ready for it you're always trying to or even if you are you know like you spend a lot of time with that person or that monster and so you want to put your best foot forward and let them see what they're missing without you. Yes. Um, so that definitely was in my mind, especially collaborating with the wardrobe department. We put a lot of thought into what is Cleo going to wear when she first arrives at school. And it's the first time she and Deuce are seeing each other since their breakup. Like she needs to pull out all the stops and look her yes. best. 
So that was in our, all our minds when we were putting together that outfit. And definitely in every scene, I was thinking, okay, he's looking, I've got to, you know. <laughs> yeah, I love that. And had you worked with him before? Um, no. Oh, okay. I hadn't met any of the cast members before this show, which is pretty amazing. Actually, I don't think any of us knew each other. Maybe some of us knew of each other or like had met in passing, but everyone was pretty new, which is surprising because our chemistry all together was pretty instantaneous. I, I've seen it. I love the TikToks so yes. much. Yes. Oh my, we just had so much fun on set. And there are so many more that I haven't posted yet. I'm really excited. So they, they will see the light of day. Oh, absolutely. I'm just, I'm biding my time, you know? Yeah, well, because once you run out, you run out until there's another reboot, reboot, right? Mm, hint, hint. Ooh, I might, I might. I know nothing. I know nothing. I know. Right I know. now. I have like insider info from Vibe, and I just definitely don't. No, I, I don't know. All I have is wishful thinking and manifesting. Yeah, well, and it's so funny because so many times I'll be like, I'll be interviewing someone and I'll be like, yeah, so any word on a season two? And they're like, Ava, we find out maybe a day before you because it's sometimes that it's that quick. Yeah, it, it always is. I mean, even when, when I was originally cast, I think I booked the job and four days later, I was in the recording studio recording the songs. And then a week after that, I was in Vancouver doing the camp. So it's, it all happens so fast. I love that. And Vancouver, this is probably the most fangirl question that will ever come out of my mouth in an interview ever. That's where Riverdale <laughs> films, did yeah. you not, were you close to Cole Sprouse at all? <laughs> Maybe. I mean, my Cole Sprouse radar has dulled down, unfortunately, since my Zach and Cody fandom days. Um, but it's entirely possible. I do know that our choreographer, Heather Laura Gray, and her assistant, Randa Barrett, they both choreograph for Riverdale. So I was one degree of separation away from Cole Sprouse, but physical proximity, it's hard yes, to say. I'm not sure. Now, do you believe in the six, is it six or seven degrees of separation? Do you believe in that? Oh, yeah. Oh yeah, just, just this morning I was calculating how many degrees of separation I am away from Taylor Swift. I absolutely believe it. Okay, how many are you? Three. That's it? Mm -hmm. Are you close enough with person three to get to meet her? I, I'll have to get back to you on that. I I'm gonna need to, I'm gonna need to schmooze a little bit more, I think. Yeah, person one. Yeah, wait, now let me think about this. Are you defining it as by the time you get to the sixth person, they're like on like speaking terms, like they know this person? So I know I have a very close friend okay. who has a good friend who has had lunch with her. Okay. Okay. That would be similar to mine. And I'm just now realizing I'm also three degrees from Taylor Swift. And that's oh like, my gosh. who would be like, so yeah. We've got to pull our sources and make something happen. I know. Imagine the people are the same. No, they would, they would never be. She knows a lot. I mean, hey, it's a small world. You never know. No, it is such a small world. It really is. Um, <laughs> speaking of which, are you based in LA full time now? I am. Yes. This is my home base. Love it. Are you, um, do you have any projects coming up you can talk about or any, you know, collabs coming up? Ooh, well, I do have one project coming out and I, I hate doing this because it just makes me feel bad to not be able to share all the details, but I'm not allowed to say too much about it yet. It is a video game. I will say that it's coming out supposedly early 2023 okay. and even worse, it's going to be pretty difficult to recognize me because in it, I have a very thick Israeli accent. So when I have more information, I will be sure to share it with you. Please do. Or you could just wait around until someone realizes it's you and then. Yes. Like, and no. I will confirm or deny. And no, don't do that. I'm just <laughs> um, Okay. So I have to ask the Monster High fandom is huge. What um, fandoms do you consider yourself a part of? Besides Ooh, that, as a fan, okay. I will never leave and you should never leave either. Yes. Um, <laughs> Taylor Swift, obviously. Swift. Um, Taylor Swift, Harry Potter, 
Um, <laughs> Disney. Definitely Disney. I mean, all of Disney, but I do have a very special love for the Disney princesses. I actually wrote my undergraduate honors thesis on the evolution of aestheticism in the Disney princess lineup. So them, um, Studio Ghibli, love Studio Ghibli, especially Howl's Moving Castle. Um, the Barbie movies. Yes. I'm a pretty huge fan of the Barbie movies. Did you ever have the Barbie cake? The Barb. Oh, is that where there's the Barbie and then her dress is the cake? I never had a Barbie cake. I had a Mulan cake. I had a Harry Potter cake that was in the shape of a like a Fantasia hat. Oh my! Um, yeah, those are all the cakes I can think of. Did not have a Barbie cake though. Hey, it's not too late. I think they still make yes. go to like balls. I think it's still there. I'll have to check that out. Yes. This coming February. Yes, and now <laughs> I realized the way to judge someone's uh, dedication to a fandom is to go through the cakes they've had for their birthday. Oh, that is. That's great. Right, Harry Potter and Mulan. Disney. And Mulan, yeah. Okay. I'm gonna have to remember that. Yes, I did. I didn't do Mulan. I've done a bell cake and- Yum. Uh, Dragon Tales. I love- oh, Yes, Dragon Tales. Oh my God, nostalgia. It's such a cute show. Such a cute show. Yes. Oh my gosh. I, I, I just, again, like nostalgia. I'm a very nostalgic. I know. All those PBS kids shows just get me right in the heart. Yes. And Arthur. Oh my gosh. Yes. And they're, they're, I don't know if you watched Bear in the Big Blue House growing up. Yes, I did. Yes. I just saw that they're adding it to Disney Plus. So Arthur. I might have to be one of those weirdos who's way too old to be watching that. Just tuning in for my inner child. <laughs> You're not too old. My nighttime routine, ask any of my friends. I choose an episode of Zach and Cody or Sweet Life on Deck. Yes. Oh I, my gosh. Such a comfort show. It seriously is. That show is funny. Like it yes. is so funny. It really is. And the characters are just, they're so amazing. Yes. I feel like I, it's one of those shows, like this might sound cheesy, but like everyone relates to someone in that same. Oh yeah. Like, I think, yeah. that, I think that's what makes a fandom live on for so long yes oh London Tipton was absolutely an inspiration for Cleo yes okay. yes yes although London's probably mm, a bit more spoiled and a bit more dry. maybe a bit more spoiled a, a lit a little bit longer to sort of come around and be a yes. friend but maybe Cleo aspires to be like that one day hey like the super villain right yes um, okay, I have a couple more questions. And this one, it's very hard to word. I was figuring out how I was going to word it and I don't know. So bear with me. Does it, okay, you know, Monster Hire, like Archie comics, they're just stuck in high school. Mm, yes. Grow up. Does that ever like trip you up <laughs> or is that just a me thing? <laughs> oh, uh, trip me up in what way? Like, like, oh, they're frozen in time. So like, if there was a reboot, it would be happening almost spontaneous like simultaneously like they're kind of stuck in this one time frame interesting yeah I mean it definitely was trippy at times because when you're reading about each individual character you're like wow wait these monsters are all really different ages like Cleo is 1600 years old but Frankie is 16 days old <laughs> and they're in the same class and Headmistress Bloodgood has to be younger than Cleo just because, you know, time. So how does that work out? But Cleo's still a teenager. I guess she just, maybe she had, she takes longer to learn. Okay. And I'm going to own that for her. Hey, yes, that's fine. We're, are we doing a little character development exercise on a Friday night? I love it. I guess so. You know, it's never too late. No, um, no, that definitely is sort of trippy. And I think it's just one of those things where you have to suspend your disbelief and be like, yeah this is, this is it. I guess it does kind of make sense because I did do a lot of reading into Cleo's backstory and it said that she sort of became a mummy when there was some kind of, oh my gosh, the OG monster high people are going to hate me if I get any of this wrong, but you guys, I'm trying. I think she, her family was ambushed or they were somehow betrayed and she and her father and Nephra were all like entombed prematurely in this pyramid 
and there was some kind of flower that like preserved their lives but also made them undead and like the mother somehow just didn't make it in time and they were stuck there for like hundreds of years so that explains the sibling rivalry like imagine being stuck under a pyramid with your dad and your sister for hundreds of years I would I I'd lose it stir crazy I might even unravel oh <laughs> yes. I um but yeah, that so maybe that explains why she's got some catching up to do. Yes. No, I think you got the story right. I'll ask my friend who's like a complete expert. On that. Yes. Please. You know, Claudina? Yes, I met her. Yes. Oh, okay, she's one of my yes. best friends. So I'll ask her to confirm. Oh my gosh, that's awesome. We've been texting. We've been texting about House of Dragon and a bunch of other shows. Yeah, I'm gonna, I'm, I'll let her know. Oh my gosh, yeah. She helped me like I'm like, make sure these questions like look good and she helped me like construct. Oh my them. god, that's so sweet. Yeah, no, she's the best. Got me like into Monster High like for the first time. That's so, amazing. No, I'm, I'm I'm such a fan. Oh, same, same. I'm like, I look at the TikToks and I'm like, wait, how, how no li literally flawless in every single one. I know. It does not make sense. It I know it makes me mad. It's actually <laughs> I'm just kidding. It's like I love you, but I hate you. <laughs> um, but no, I feel like so much of this fandom has become like word of mouth or like, you know, with like any doll line, like I think was it you who saying you you would go to your cousins because you weren't allowed to play with certain yes. dolls? Yes. Literally me. Yeah. So and then we kind of become our own fans, but we have to keep it hidden for a bit. Yes, yeah. that's right. I, I've I've been there. I so. think. I had also sort of aged out of like, oh, the appropriate age to play with dolls. So I only had my cousin. And so it was just really contained there for a while. But now I can just shamelessly be a Monster High fan. And yes. I don't care. No, exactly. no apologies. No apologies. <laughs> exactly. I'm the same way. I mean, at the same time, I feel like it has to do with the name because parents will be like monster. I don't want you to be right. Monsters. yeah so I get Anything it like that or their heels are too high <laughs> yeah, like that's fun and I'm only four four ten so imagine if I had known heels existed oh. I would have felt so much taller I've won five one no way unite yeah oh, no, definitely I mean I guess it's the angles I thought you were at least like five five nope it was the eight inch platform heels uh, I'm glad they did their job yes oh they definitely did they definitely did. <laughs> I love that. See, five one to me. I'm like, oh, that's tall. Oh my gosh. That's hey, so if I had a couple extra inches, I'd be, I'd be living the life. <laughs> yes, yes, dominating. Well, um, Jai, I was about to call you Cleo because I <laughs> feel like so much, but that's a good thing. That's literally like method acting. I don't know. Um, <laughs> thank you so much for making time, especially like yes. Friday night. That was so kind of oh you. Oh my gosh, of course. No, thank you. This has been such a pleasure. It just feels like I've been chatting with a friend. This has been so wonderful. Thank you. And I'll tell you why. Thank you. Because that is kind of the reason I do interviews I want to take those barriers down and just yeah no this has been my heart hasn't been racing at all I just oh. feel so comfortable talking to you oh. no, this is so fun amazing well we'll have to do something in person sometime yes I would love to back up yes um I haven't done a like Nickelodeon carpet in way too long so oh my gosh yeah because the pandemic and everything kids choice awards maybe that would be a yes. much, I think okay yes. Let's let's make it happen. All the yeah. platforms, maybe. <laughs> um, all right, I'll be on your level that day. Yes, yes. <laughs> awesome. Do you just want to plug all your socials for us? Um, just remind people yeah. where they can the movie. For sure. Yeah, you can find me on Instagram, on TikTok, on Twitter. Um, I definitely will be a little more active on TikTok and Instagram Reels in the next coming weeks, sharing more BTS with you guys. It's just my name, Jai Prashkulnik, no spaces on all three platforms. And you can watch Monster High now on Nickelodeon and on Paramount Plus. Perfect. Well, I will go now rewatch it on Paramount Plus because I'm only on the streaming platforms now. Yay! Yeah. Thank you so much. Um, I hope you feel better. I hope you have a great Thank weekend. You. Thank you so much. You too. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Great. That was awesome. Thank you so much. Yay! Thank you. Um, oh my gosh, the puppies. <laughs>